Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion from St Albans Anglican Church here in Musselbrook. We sadly have gone into a lockdown and so unfortunately we cannot be together as a community. But hopefully you will benefit from celebrating with me this Eucharist as we continue to be the body of Christ in this place in Musselbrook. As we come together today as a Christian community, we pause to acknowledge the Waranua and the Kamilaroi peoples as the traditional owners and custodians of this land. And we join our custodianship with theirs, honouring their elders, past, present and emerging. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confidence in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may see you in the fulfilment of our need and may turn from every false satisfaction to feed on the true living bread that you have given us in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the second book of Samuel. The king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. Then the men of Israel were defeated by the servants of David, 
and the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule and the mule went under thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule was under him went on. Joab said, I will not waste time like this with you. He took three spears in his hand and thrust them into the heart of Absalom while he was still alive on the oak. Then the Cushite came and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord, the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, it is well, is it well, with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you, O Absalom, my son, my son. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, should note what we do wrong, who then, O Lord, could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and in his word is my hope. My soul looks for the Lord, more than the watchman for the morning. More, I say, than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with which the Lord there is mercy, and with him there is ample redemption. He will redeem Israel from the multitude of their sins. Our second reading this morning comes from the letter to the Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth of our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labour and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for the building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness, and wrath, and anger, and wrangling, and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the bread from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. The bread that I give you for the life of the world is my flesh. So the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer and Sanctifier. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. It's strangely prophetic that our service today at this table of the Lord is actually limited to just this table of the Lord. So I can actually film this service of Holy Communion because I am on my own in our church here at St Albans in Musselbrook. I'm here alone recording our service because we are in lockdown. We're in lockdown due to this pandemic. This is that table where we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. This is the table where we come to share in the bread of life and the cup of salvation in this community of God's people here in Musselbrook. At this table, we marvel at the mystery of Jesus' claim that he is the bread of life, that if we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, because we believe in his promises, that we will share in life eternal with him. This week is the third in a series of five weeks of readings from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, centred around Jesus' claim that he is the bread of life from heaven and that through him we will not be hungry or thirsty if we feast on him. Jesus' claims are bold both then and now. The promise of never being hungry or thirsty again would have been hard to understand when he said it back in the first century, and it is hard to understand today. It's hard to understand for many believing Christians and virtually impossible for people who struggle with the idea of faith. If you've spent a bit of time studying the scriptures and participating in worship, listening to preachers and teachers of the word of God, you will likely interpret these claims by Jesus 
to be not directly related to the physical consumption of food and drink. But it does provoke us to wonder if believing in Jesus will satisfy our hunger and quench our thirst. What about the millions of people around the world who are starving and who are thirsty? Those people in places across our planet who have to journey many kilometres every day to access water and for whom no manner of heaven is falling from the sky to feed them. It is a confusing metaphor. And we only have to think back about 18 months ago to recall that we were in extreme drought here in rural New South Wales when the absence of naturally occurring water had such a devastating effect and impact on our food sources. Human beings depend on food and water for survival, second only to oxygen. And to the first century followers of Jesus, the crowds who were pursuing him after his miraculous feeding of the 5,000 men and women and their children who were seeking signs and wonders that this rabbi, this messiah, would be the king they were seeking. These words completely baffled them. And they were downright bemused by his claim to be sent from God. Wasn't this Jesus, the son of Mary and Joseph, from downtown old ordinary Nazareth? And yet now he was saying he was from God, that he was from heaven. Jesus' claim to be from God is either a miracle from heaven or he was a blaspheming liar. And the suggestion that to share in eternal life demands eating his flesh, now that was beyond their comprehension. These people following Jesus from place to place in John chapter 6, these Jewish leaders and the crowds, they would have been very familiar with this story about ancient Israel's hunger as they stumbled about in the wilderness, how God provided for them bread from heaven called manna. What they knew about bread, both in their time and in the ancient times, is that it would have been bread that could be cooked from the raw ingredients. Then, having been cooked, it could be shared and eaten, whether it was manna from heaven or their usual bread from the grain that they had made to eat with their meals. But Jesus is offering something very different. Jesus has been sent by the Father to draw people in, to believe in him. Jesus has been sent to invite people to put their faith in him, to learn about him, to trust in him. Jesus has been sent so that the followers of Jesus in John's Gospel and all believers might be able to have our hunger satisfied and our thirst quenched. The hunger caused by our mortality, the hunger caused by our fears of being separated from God. Our fears of being separated from God in life circumstances and our fears of being separated from God for all eternity through sin and death. The hunger caused by our fear that God is not with us in our suffering and in the suffering of others. That we might cry out to God and heaven forbid, God might not answer us. God might not even hear us. As we come to believe in Jesus, the bread of life, 
we come to recognise that God does hear us and that he is with us in our sufferings as well as our celebrations and that through the cross of Jesus, our hunger is truly satisfied and our thirst is fully quenched. As we come to this, the Lord's table, to share in the Lord's Supper as, institu as instituted by Jesus the night before he was crucified, in penitence and in faith, we come to feed on Jesus in our heart through our faith, with thanksgiving. In faith and with thanksgiving for his once and for all sufficient sacrifice for our sins, for the sins of the whole world. And we rejoice in his re resurrection and ascension where we will join him in the heavenly banquet. Now that will be some table. And I imagine it will not just be some bread and some wine. At that table, there will be a feast like we could never imagine in this life. When we gather at table with our families and our friends and with our faith community, we get a sense of not just being filled with food and drink that satisfies, but with the company of one another. Have you ever been to a wedding or other celebratory feast when the food and the wine is flowing and the conversation is uplifting and everyone's having a marvellous time. Something like that is what I imagine of the heavenly banquet. This is the hospitality of God at its best, expressed by the people of God. This community of Musselbrook loves to share in a meal after worship whether it's coffee and cake, lunch at a local cafe, a meal at the local pub, or a major celebration in one of our church halls. Being together at table, showing the hospitality of God, is another way in which we encounter God, our God of the universe, the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of peace and all good. When we worship, we are drawn to the Lord's table, to this table. And God's open invitation extends well beyond our walls of our church building, to our church halls, to our homes, to our local cafes, to our pubs and restaurants. This is the hospitality of God. God draws us to this table of worship, to worship, prayer and sacrament, away from the distractions of this world, where we are immersed in this common memory of all faithful Christians for all time. This common memory of the Last Supper and the immense grace of God for all people for all time. Whether it is at the Lord's table or around our other tables, when people of faith gather, we are one body. We are the community of faith. God's table is intended to be a table of vibrant conversation, celebration and plenty. A table of common memory and of hope for the future. God wants us to meet with him and with each other at his table, at our tables, wherever they are. God draws us to his table and we are invited to call others to join us at God's table. We gather at God's table sharing in worship and praying with and for one another, even as we cry out to God about our world and about its suffering. And especially at this time of the coronavirus pandemic and our lockdown, 
as we are separated from one another and we are prevented from being in our churches and being in community with one another. At this table, we would normally share in the bread and the cup, remembering that Jesus' body was given up for us and that his blood was poured out for us. But we cannot be together today. So whilst today you will share with me in what we understand to be spiritual communion, not being able to physically partake in the sacraments of the body and blood of Christ, as I receive the body and blood for us all, please be assured that God is drawing you to him, whether or not you can physically consume the sacraments. The God of love is drawing you to him to share in his hospitality, to know his forgiveness and to be fed by him for all eternity. All are welcome at God's table. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now together affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from not, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the world and for the church. God of love, you have loved us first and continue to love us. We come before you a people longing to love you in return. We hunger for your healing in our lives and we long to love ourselves and our neighbours. Come to us this day and fill our longing. God of love, trusting in your providence and presence, we pray for an end to this pandemic. We pray for your strengthening of all who are committed to costly leadership during this crisis. We pray for all who are ill. We pray for all who are anxious about getting ill. We pray for those who are full of grief and remember those who have died. Acknowledging our human fragility, we pray for your grace to sustain us as we do what we can to end this pandemic. God of love, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love and all holiness, on this day of love and wonder, 
We are awakened to the mysteries of life that you create. As we give thanks to you for our wonderful deeds of love and grace, we pray for the human family, that we might be renewed and restored to love in your image. Hear our prayers for our earthly families and for those who journey alone that we might establish within your church such a glowing love and acceptance that friendship might be strengthened and the joy of fellowship be known, that none may journey in loneliness, especially in this time of lockdown. Bless Peter, our bishop, Sonia and Charlie, our assistant bishops, and all ministers of your church. We pray for our parish of Musselbrook, Aberdeen and Castle Rock, and for our brothers and sisters representing all denominations in Musselbrook, Denman and Skye. Make us disciples and heralds of your kingdom and grant us courage to boldly share the good news of your gospel. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you summons leaders to represent the needs of your people. We pray for our leaders throughout the world and particularly our leaders in this nation, Australia, that they may govern with wisdom and compassion for all people. We pray for peace and goodwill towards all people and protection from violence, discord, disorder and wrongdoing. We pray for our Prime Minister Scott, for our Premier Gladys and for their advisers, for David, our local member, and for our mayors in the Musselbrook and Upper Hunter local government, Rod and Morris. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you draw near to those who cry out to you for help. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. May our communities be grounded in your love for our world and be places of forgiveness and reconciliation, where love is practised in practical ways in our dealings with others who need us and need you. We pray for those who are in need, especially in this time of the pandemic and long and instantaneous lockdown. We pray for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved, for those who are anxious, for those who struggle with addictions and for all who live with chronic illness. We give thanks and pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We pray for those whose names and needs are known only to you and for those who have asked for our prayers. Judy, Alexis and Paul, Betty, Bev, David, Helen, Mona, Gwen, Glenn, June, Sue, Joey, Lynn, Bruce and Faye, Donna, Caitlin, Thomas, Amy and Erin. God of love, in your mercy, hear God of love, you provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all your saints to feast together in your heavenly banquet. Keep us close to your heart throughout our lives. Support us with your grace and heal us with your forgiving love. Lead us by your spirit into the kingdom won for us by your Son. We remember before you those who have died recently, especially Cliff Ryan and those who we have loved and lost, whose anniversary of death occurs at about this time. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, Bring your radical, scandalous healing and peace into our midst and touch us with your love, for we ask it in the name of the one who calls us ever forward, 
Jesus Christ our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we now share in the peace of Christ. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. mystery of this water and wine, may we share in Christ's divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humility. Cleanse me from my sins and wash away my Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts of bread and wine to share. May they become for us the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin, and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we give you thanks for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, that we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and his blood. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, 
his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joys of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ given for you and for me. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Let us pray. Living God, in this holy meal, you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us. Give us courage for our pilgrimage and bring us to the joys you promise. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Go in peace.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.